Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to show you guys a hands-on example of NLP, Natural Language Processing, also known as Sentiment Analysis or Text Analytics. I'm going to be using a dataset from Kaggle where you have to identify whether the tweets are hatred related or not. Alright, let's jump right into it. Okay, so first thing first, let's, let's download a dataset. We're going to go to kaggle.com. And under the data tab, we're going to search for the data set. The data set is called Twitter Sentiment Analysis. And it's the first one. Now, before we download it, let's try to understand the data set. So the main goal is to detect hate speech in tweets. Now, in the training sample, we see that the tweets are labeled one. If they are racist or sexist related, and otherwise it's zero. Okay, so now go ahead and download the data set. Now I've already downloaded to our local to my local computer here. Um, and once you download it, you're gonna have to unzip it. Okay, so let's go back to our Google Colab. And then slap these two CSV files into, into the files. All right, successfully loaded. So first thing first, let's load the basic libraries, scikit-learn, numpy, and pandas. And then we're going to import the data. Import data. Hey, that's my YouTube channel name. So to find the, to find the path of this, these files, you're going to have to Go to these, go to these files, and then right-click the file you, you want to copy the path of, and then basically copy, click copy path, and then paste it here. Okay, run the cell. Now we're gonna call our training data as train, and then the, our test data as test. All right. So the next part is the exploratory data analysis. Uh, let's check what the training data looks like. Now we're gonna use the dot head function and then we're gonna see the first 10 items. I think the default value is five. So if you just don't put anything here, it gives you the five items. Okay, so, um, okay, so we see that in the training data, there's an ID, ID column, label column, and then the tweet column. And for this tutorial, we're gonna use label and tweet to classify our test data. And in the tweet, we see that there's um, there's those special cases like add or hashtag. And then we're also gonna check the test data as well. And for this one, we're gonna check the last five items by using the dot tail function. Okay, so in the training, in the test data, we see that there's only ID and tweet. And we also see that there's special cases like um, hashtags. Just to understand what the data set looks like, let's check how many tweets are non-hatred related or hatred related. So there, there are 29,000 non-hatred related tweets and there are around 2,000 hatred related tweets. So we can see that this particular data set is nice given that there's not a lot of non-hatred related tweets. All right, so next we're going to check if there are any missing values. The basic idea is to use um, the is null function, and then we're just going to take the sum of it in the training data. So in the ID label and tweet column, we see that there, there are no missing values. And you can also do this by, using, by doing this way which gives you the true and false value. So we see that there are no missing values. I'll go back. Okay, so the next part is data cleaning part. Now we're gonna use um, two libraries. The first one is this tweet preprocessor. Now this is a special library for 
cleaning the tweets. So let's quickly check the library. Uh, tweets, tweet processor, and it's the first one. So basically, it removes the URLs, hashtags, mentions, RTs, and emojis, etc. Now we're going to install it. Okay, so we're also going to use the regular expression library to remove those special cases that the tweet preprocessor didn't have. So the next part, we're going to create a special function which cleans the data set. Um, so we're going to call the tweet preprocessor as p, and then we're going to use it here. And then the next part, we're going to use the regular expression library to get rid of all those special cases. All right, so let's run the cell. And then now that we have created our function to clean the data, we're going to pass the tweets from the training data into our function. And then we're going to make it into a data frame. All right, so the next, we're going to append the clean tweets to our original data set, and then we're going to compare it. Okay, so we have successfully cleaned the data set. We can see that there's no at sign here or the hashtags in the clean tweet. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing for the test data as well. And we can see that it's successfully working. All right, the next part is the test and train split. And we're going to simply use the train underscore test underscore split library to do this. For this tutorial, we're going to use 70% of the data as the training data and then the 30% as the test data. And you can specify the test size in the function right here. I run the cell. All right, now we will convert the text into numeric form as our model won't be able to understand the human language. And we will vectorize the tweets using the count vectorizer library. The count vectorizer library provides a simple way of tokenizing a collection of text documents and building a voc vocabulary of known words. So let me quickly show you an example of how it works. We're going to load the import the count vectorizer library from sklearn. And let's say we have these three documents. First one is, this is import data's YouTube channel. The second document is, data science is my passion and it is fun. And then the third document is, please subscribe to my channel. Okay, now we're gonna initialize our account vectorizer function by calling it as vectorizer. And then the next part, we're gonna tokenize and make the document into a matrix by using this dot fit underscore transform function. And we're going to call it as document underscore term underscore matrix. And then to check the result, we're going to make it into a data frame. And then the column names will be the, um, the words in the document. So each word from the document. Basically, it's going to combine all of these documents and create a column. So let's run this cell and see what happens. Okay, so we can see that from the first document, there's no and but there is channel, there is data, and so on. And from the second document, we see that um, there is and, there is a data, and we see there exists two is's, and so on. Now that we have understanding of how the count vectorizer works, we're gonna apply it to our um, tweet data. Basically, we're gonna do the same thing. Um, Notice that I'm using stop burst um, argument here. Basically, what it does is it removes um, stop words such as like A, V, or N, stuff like that. And, and then we're going to learn a vocabulary dictionary of all tokens in the raw documents. And notice we are using both the training and the test data. And then finally, we're going to uh, convert documents to documentary matrix like we did above here. All right. Run the cell. All right, successfully ran. Now the next part is the model building part. Um, for this tutorial, 
I'm going to use a supervised learning algorithm called Supported Vector Classifier. It is widely used for binary, cla binary classifications and multi-class classification. Uh, okay, so we're going to import the library from sklearn, and then we're going to classify using the support classifier, support vector classifier, and we're going to use a linear as a kernel. Okay, and then next we're going to fit the model using the training data, and then the last part we're going to do the predictions on sample and x test. Okay. Now this is going to take a hot minute, so let me fast forward it. Okay, it has successfully run. Now, the moment of truth, let's check the accuracy of our model. And boom, there we go, we got a 95% accuracy. So let's quickly recap what we did. We basically, okay, so we got the data set from the Kaggle, and then we cleaned the data using the tweet preprocessor library and then the regular expression library. And then we split the training and the test data by 30 to 70% uh, 30 ratio. And then we vectorized tweets using the count vectorizer library. And then we built the model using the support vector classifier. And finally, we achieved a 95% of accuracy, which is pretty good. I hope you find this video useful. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing. Thank you.